Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Battletech Heavy Metal. Uh, in the comments of the previous episode, people were very pro-crab. And, I mean, to be perfectly honest, there's almost no chance I wasn't gonna buy the crab. But, it does help to have it reinforced a little bit by people. Uh, I'm a little concerned about... the gameplay maybe getting stale with us using the King Crab in every mission for the rest of the, uh, the rest of the campaign. But a couple of people pointed out that that's probably not actually worse than doing another 10 or 15 episodes of us fighting mostly locusts, which is a real good point. So let's go ahead and take this king crab and allow it to push us to ever greater heights. You'll notice we have a little bit more money than we had. I went and cleared out the one skull contracts that were left in this world because I figured there was no, no chance that they were going to be a problem. I've left the one and a half because one and a half still get kind of hot sometimes. So let's do this, then we'll buy the crab, and then we'll uh, we'll head out. There's no sense in putting the crab together now because it will uh, it will have no weapons on it, so we won't be able to use it for this mission anyway. If we were to buy the whole assembled crab for 13, uh, 13 mil, that would come fully armed. But because we're building it ourselves out of out of parts, we're going to have to do the armament ourselves. So the local government control of this world is nearly absolute, but we've identified a point of vulnerability. They move supplies and weapons by convoy, and those convoys are lightly defended by a single lance of max. If we destroy enough of their convoys, their other operations will be weakened enough for our forces to move in and take advantage of their fragility. We don't want to tip our hand, however, so we'd like you to engage in a little guerrilla warfare on our behalf. Yeah, we're, uh, we're deniable assets. I'm used to this by now. So, we have plenty of cash. There's some chance that we're going to see one thing we want on a skull and a half. I'm comfortable taking a single point of priority. Uh, now, some of the mechs have gotten a little bit scraped up <laughs> in all of the fighting. A couple of those one skull missions turned out to be a little hotter than I was expecting. Uh, but I think we should be able to take this down, especially since it's a convoy thing. We can shoot down vehicles from a distance pretty easily. Uh, we're bringing the assassin rather than any of the uh, have more heavily armed mechs because of the heat issues on the uh, the lunar the lunar biome. All of these mechs run pretty hot, and the assassin can just stay back, and it'll be fine. And yes, I know all of my mechs are, are partially damaged. The Griffin is pretty much fine. The first Centurion is pretty much fine, and the other one can just uh, stay really far back. I mean, there's not actually a ton of damage. It's just a lot of areas got damaged a little bit. Um, I mean, our one Centurion, we or maybe it was the Griffin. I, it, it was, I think it was the Griffin. There was one mech that we overheated, so it took five, um, five damage to each area, which generates a whole bunch of warning messages, but turns out not to be a big deal at all. Darius notes that this is a solid plan as long as they're right about the defenses being light. And when he says right, what he really means is honest. Whatever, we'll figure it out. It's close I can get you without tripping every early warning system in the area. You move up to here, you should be able to see the targets. The escorts are optional, but you know how I love money. Once you've wrapped up... Uh, ooh, Darius, do you see those engine signatures? All right, there may be additional enemy forces in the field. Like Maybe. Some kind of bug took a giant crap all over this planet. What? Was was that crackle? Buddy, what are you talking about? So I guess they're coming up this road and heading over to here. That gives us an awful lot of time to intercept them. Uh, let's just go ahead and have the assassin run pretty far forward. It's quite fast. Our target is it's good at falling back, so I, I don't I don't mind committing it really hard here during the initial walk phase. And of course, the Griffin's got to get close, but you two can probably pretty safely stay up on the ridge, right? Okay, so that's an escort back. I'm here. Listen, I don't want to I don't want to get anybody's hopes too high up. We are definitely still going to have to fight locusts from time to time. But uh, I, too, am looking forward to being able to do somewhat more difficult missions so that we can see a, uh, a greater variety of enemies. Uh-oh. ECM nonsense is happening. I wonder if they have a raven or if they have uh, an ECM vehicle. 
Either way, it's annoying. Uh, I probably don't want to just, like, reserve down, right? I, I, I want to move in. It might be that we are going to have to get pretty close to these guys to be able to actually shoot them. Can't get anywhere near, like, a range where I'm going to have an actual good shot on this guy. I wonder if I even want to fire the snub PPC. Uh, a pack rat support vehicle. Large laser and ECM stuff. There's a panther in there. All right. I might just turn off the PPC so as to avoid gaining the heat. Man, this is not a lot of damage. So this is a problem. I got you. I mean, that ECM vehicle is pretty much going to have to be um, going to have to be countered by having the Griffin step on it. Waiting on you, Commander. Don't need to tell me twice. Okay, here's another situation where I think we probably want to turn off a weapon to save heat. And also to not get it on recoil. Right. Overkill beats the hell out of underkill. I'll take it. Dang, you're dead. You gotta love that enthusiasm. Yeah, they have vision of me. We gotta get inside the circle, right? We gotta get somebody inside the circle. Shouldn't be too hard. The griffin's pretty fast. Even if I have to sprint to make it, that'd be okay. The fact that the pack rat itself moves before us, but the rest of their vehicles move after us, means that we are probably gonna see them, uh, see their little stealth convoy here break up a little bit. Actually, is the pack rat the pack rat's the thing that moves on three? If I can't get inside the circle with this move, okay, I can. I'm wondering if maybe the the smart move here is to just let it. Well, no, I don't want to just let it resolve down because, or I don't want to reserve down on this because I do want to be able to fire before the other vehicles have their turn. All right, so we step inside. That reveals them. Then it takes its turn and, okay, it just ran away and abandoned them. So that was hey. nice of it. It's going to make this a lot easier. How worried am I about the panther? I it has a PPC, you. but I think the answer is not very worried. Advancing. I think we're just going to start having at the, uh, the strikers here. I hope. That's a shame all of that hit the front. Really hoping to put a dent in the side armor so that the other uh, the other mechs would be able to participate. Because actually, I'm getting um, a little too far back here. I don't know why it's so hard to run forward onto the hillside. Can I get to a position where I have an autocannon shot? I cannot, in fact. Well, that's less than ideal. I mean, I'll take the I'll take the jump into the AC twenty, but not happy about it. Maybe all of these will hit the front too. Nope, not a single one of them. And in fact, if I had hit the right side armor with even one of the assassins' missiles, that thing would be dead now. That's annoying. All right, we're gonna give him one of the LRM five pods and. You get the rest of the weaponry. No problem. I've got enough. Primary target is damaged, Commander. Keep it up. I did not have faith in the UAC, but apparently I should have. Warning. I'm enemy reinforcements detected. Looks like enemy reinforcements. Oh, cool. Enemy reinforcements directly behind us. Well, this is going to be a little bit ugly. The good news is, like I said, we have a lot of time before the vehicles actually reach the reach the escape, and they have to go past. They have to go out away from us, and then past us again for it to happen. So probably there's no danger of them getting away. Right? They'll disappear around the curve for a while, and then we'll just kill them afterward. Is the like the worst case scenario.
Hmm. Part of me wants to just punch that thing. It's a shame I can't see where the sensor circle is. I don't have a good enough um, a good enough idea of how large it is to know whether or not this would get me into it. I think, like I'm saying, we can probably just ignore these guys for a little bit. Let's turn around. We'll do a uh, we'll do a punch to the rear armor. Yeah, punch to the rear armor seems good. Let this thing know that it is not safe. Oh, if the laser had hit center, that would have been a kill. Fairly sure. Yep, I left him at two. Well, like I said, he knows he is not safe. Unfortunately, nobody else can get anywhere near his back armor. And also unfortunately, double unfortunately, we do not have any people available who can, um... Who can sensor lock, so those guys on the other side of the hill are just not accessible to us at all. There. Okay. I'm gonna have the assassin kinda no. swing around the side here. Alright, so that one that one bit of his torso is real messed up. If we hit him in the left side again, he's probably uh, he's probably gonna lose it. And I wish I had the ability to get vision of these guys at all. Well, careful not to turn too much because I don't want to show my back to the top of the hill. I mean, we may as well just see if we can finish this guy off. Okay. Easy enough. All that actual structural damage done, uh, did, uh, <clears throat> done by the punch really paid off there. And then I'm just going to reserve down here. My guess is we're not going to get anything of, of value out of doing so, but also she just doesn't have a meaningful turn no matter what we do. I don't know if I want to get closer. I mean, I definitely need to be in a position where I can shoot the guys who are coming in from the top of the hill, so I guess that means I got to be up here. Equal signatures are over there. I mean, I get visual on that guy. I mean, you may as well just have at these dudes, I guess. Alright, the pack rat moves even further away from its escort, and I'm gonna have the griffin make for the top of the hill. What are your orders, Skipper? My orders are do not call me Skipper. What on earth? Copy that, Commander. I don't even really know what a skipper is. I think it's a boat thing. I am not a boat, a boat, a boat man. I'm a spaceman. I don't know if there's a proper term for for this I'm thing. On. Just call me something that makes me feel like we're in space. Wing commander. Call me wing commander. I hear ya. Everybody, everybody loves a good wing commander. Well, it feels like I probably don't need to focus on that locust quite so much. Let's um see if we can just put this one away really fast. Got it. All right, we've hit basically none of our weapons to the center torso, but it turns out if you just put enough numbers up, it all goes through to the center eventually. This was a skull and a half, huh? Hey. Confirmed. Let's have uh, let's have somebody try to finish this job. Please, please do not be rolling in the cockpit of my mech. What you do in your off time is your business, but, you know, it's just like, it's disrespectful is all. I'm here. Alright, I think this gets us into the reveal area. Oh, I still have to have line of sight, though. Yeah, I think we're just planning to meet them Good up here. Moving out. Hey. Alright, can you jump up to a position where you can see them? No. And reserve down, let the pack rat come forward, and maybe we can pull something off here. 
It's like pulling off the side of the road that is so afraid of me. I'm here. A little worried. Okay, you know what? Weapon range here is good. Moving to position. Please have there we go. Yeah, I couldn't click on it to target it, I think, because it was underneath the text over here. Okay, so that's an easy stomp next turn. Then, unfortunately, the way the terrain is shaped, I just can't get close enough to this thing. Ready to rock. Waiting on you, Commander. And we're too far away from that thing to give it the LRMs, so... Going turbo. Just reposition up here a little bit higher. Quick stepping it. I will also accept Prince of Space. Skipper is unacceptable, but there's no such thing as a Prince of Space on a, uh, on a ship, so... I'm doomed. Doomed. <laughs> Seems like an overreaction. On my way. You know, I don't think I've ever seen it quite this close up before. Report. The Assassin's kind of a weird looking mech. Alright, this should be pretty straightforward. Well, hello. It's possible that that was a small amount of overkill, just a tiny little bit. Alright, let's do that extract. So yeah, that was easier than any of the One Skull missions. You know, it's not always uh, an exact science rating the difficulty. I like to think that the in-universe explanation for this stuff is that Darius is the one who comes up with those skull ratings, and he is 100% just guessing. Alright, well, all of our mechs have taken some minor structural damage. Was there even a single weapon here that was interesting to us? No, not really. So I guess we'll take the panther part, because we could sell a panther eventually. Okay, we got we finished a Locust 1M as well. That's something we can sell right now, because I'm pretty sure we already have one of those in the bank. So we should talk about the, the mech scoring a little bit, because I'm making decisions based on it, I'm making references to it, but I want to make sure that it's clear to everyone how it actually works. So, at the end of the campaign, we're going to get a certain number of points, I think it's 1,273, I have no idea why that's the number, for each different model of mech that we own. That's mechs that we have either in the bay or in storage. Yeah, 1,273. We will get an additional 10,000 points for each weight class that we've completed, but keep in mind this score only, uh, this score only considers the mechs that were in the base game, the previous one probably also only considers the mechs that were in the base game. Because again, like I've mentioned before, they're trying to make it so you don't have to have the expansions to get a competitive score. And then we get another 25,000 if we have all of the different mechs. So you do still have to have them. It's not enough to have collected them once and then uh, and then sell them off. So we got to make sure that we are keeping mechs, especially some of these smaller mechs. Like as we're moving away from doing smaller jobs, we want to make sure we're not... Uh, we're not losing points. Yeah, we have, that's right. We have a 1M prepped and everything. So let's go ahead and throw you in storage because you can't sell mechs unless they are in storage. And then let's go to the store and do a thing. First of all, selling. I would like to sell this guy. And there's a helpful little indicator here telling you how many you have. Uh, but remember, this only shows the number in storage. And let's buy ourselves a uh, buy ourselves a king crab. So we're gonna have like two and a half million left after this. That's like a very comfortable cushion. New equipment available. Kind of can't believe that this this black market has a full available. functional king crab and then more than a king crab's worth of spare parts on top of it. It's wild. All right, so two point six million is enough to also buy some of the other stuff we were looking at. Uh, I mean, that AC-20 is definitely compelling. 120 damage with 60 stability damage. Definitely interesting. This pulse laser, we cannot buy this. It's awesome, but it's way too expensive for what it is. 
PPC is fine. I'm not a big fan of PPCs. Um, a plus 10 damage small laser is actually pretty compelling, and it's quite cheap. We're definitely getting that. New weapon systems available. Oh, there's two of them. Yeah, absolutely. And then we'll definitely buy this SRM-4 as well. New you don't usually want to mount an SRM-4, but, you know, sixes. Sixes hold the day, but I, I think we can probably figure out a place for that. And then this comm system... I really, really like these. They have they cost no tonnage. They just go in the head slot of the mech. I think we're gonna buy this, even though it's very, very expensive. New equipment okay, and that means that in two days we make payroll, and then we still have like 800k to play with. I mean, sorry, I'm saying that, but actually, we don't know what our financial situation is until we get all the mechs in the uh, in the repair bay. So a lot of our mechs have very minor repairs to be done. I've already rolled the uh, the fire starter in. The fire starter had some uh, extensive structural damage. I mean, that thing takes damage like a champ, especially for such a small mech. I was really excited when we when we started up and the game randomed us an urban mech. But to be perfectly honest, I think the fire starter may have been the MVP of the early part of the game. I think really pushed us through some stuff. All right, and then let's talk about the king crab. I love the king crab. What an incredible mech! Where's the view button? Here we go. Look at him. Look at those big, those big clunky arm pod things. That's where you plug in all the auto cannons. All these lovely glamour shots. What is the, what is the paint pattern that we want on this guy? I like, I like the ones that have fangs in them, personally. Okay, there's something to be said for that. Orange on top, white on the front. That's kind of got like a smile where the weird, weirdly shaped view, uh, view window is the, uh, the teeth. Ooh, that's kind of neat. I like the, the yellow and the red being kind of understated. The great white crab. You know what? We're going to stick with that. All right, so let's talk about possibilities, because we definitely have some. This thing has 48 tons of space in it. You could put a whole fire starter in the arm of this thing. Part of me thinks we would be fools not to install the LB-20X on one arm and then that UAC-20 on the other arm. Because, like, think of how much gun that is. Let's have a look at what that looks like. Alright, so right now, it alpha strikes for approximately 320 damage. At a, at a maximum effective range of 270 meters, I think. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Not entirely awesome, but it still has 21 tons of space left, so it um it uses assault class jump jets. Assault class jump jets are very uh very heavy. I believe they're two tons each. We probably will not bother to install jump jets on it, which means that there are going to be some situations where it's going to have a hard time contributing. But look at all the damn bullets that it can shoot. So, we do need to slot some ammo here. Is it... LBX... LBX ammo is different, right? Yeah, okay. Each contain five rounds. No, give me... Two of these. I don't know if we're actually going to be able to mount two of them. How many AC-20 bins do we have? None. Okay, so let's also buy two of these. So, obviously, one of the big downsides of this kind of weapon is that the ammunition is extremely heavy. It's not a not a concern that you usually have in strategy games, but at the scales we're talking about in Battletech, uh, each AC-20 bin weighs one entire ton and contains five bullets. I have no idea what percentage of the total weight the bin itself is, but obviously these are some pretty damn large bullets. So, if we mount up like this... That's 19 tons of space remaining, and each of our weapons only has five shots. My inclination would be to do that thing. Maybe we should actually put the ammo in the arms? I like using the arms as a shield for the body. You know, when you uh, when you turn the mech to the side, they're so much more likely to hit the arm than they are to hit the torso. Uh, but the arms are more heavily armored. I mean, we could change that. We can mess with the armor allocation a little bit. What else would we do here? So you can see it has plenty of slots for plenty of stuff. Um, 
Downside is, zero of three jump jets, remember that this is an indication of its maximum movement speed. This is the slowest mech that we have by a significant margin. So, these super close range weapons are not necessarily going to be able to get the job done. There are two schools of thought on this. Uh, one of those schools is that, uh, on how to deal with this, I mean. One of those is, you put some LRMs on there so it has something fun to do at long range. Uh, obviously the downside of that is that that means that its weapons are not optimally functional at, not all of its weapons are optimally functional at any range. Um, I sure do like it when a mech has, um, when a mech has one excellent range where you can just put all of the damage in. And you can see that from the way that we've built many of the other mechs. I'm also, while I'm talking here, going to throw the comm system in here because we're going to be bringing this thing on a lot of missions and it's by far the least likely of our mechs to die. So, that seems like a safe place to keep our comm system, which will give us four extra morale at the beginning of each turn. It's a big deal. Another thing we could do is mount long-range capable weapon systems, like lasers, that have full function at close range. Like, let's say we do this. So now this thing on an Alpha Strike is outputting 400 damage, and it's capable of doing that at zero range. Whereas if we mounted LRMs, you know, there's a range beyond which they become basically useless. Obviously, the core issue here is that this thing is generating 10,000 heat every time it fires. Alpha Strike's at 104. So we can throw a bunch of heat sinks in. And by can, I mean must. Um, I mean, finish out the body and then try to balance them out so that if something horrible happens and we do lose an arm, we lose a side, we get to hold on to some of this stuff. So now we're sinking, <laughs> we're generating 53 more heat than we sink on an Alpha Strike. Uh, and keep in mind that hot environments reduce the amount of heat sunk by a percentage so there will be some times where we're producing like 60 heat more or 70 heat more than we sink per turn. We definitely just, like there's going to be a lot of turns where we just can't fire everything, but uh, we do have enough heat sinking to comfortably fire both of the large lasers on approach turns. Actually, two large lasers don't even really generate that much heat together. Mech sink, a th mech sink 30 heat by default, just the basic mech chassis. So, two large lasers fired together is only 36. Hmm, maybe this is too much gun. Thing is, it feels so cool that UAC-20 has 48 heat. Jesus Christ. I mean, I might just run it like this. We could replace the large lasers with medium lasers. Were there extended range mediums in this store? There weren't, right? There's a large, there's a couple, a couple of pluses, but they're all plus effectiveness. What I need is more efficient lasers. They do make. This doesn't really help us, and we literally can't afford it anyway. They do make extended range medium lasers that might be what we really want here. We just want something we can do on turns where we can't quite make uh, make it up. I would love to th uh, slot those awesome lasers in here, but the fact is, this mech is, of all of our mechs, the one that is least likely to get to apply a small laser, so probably this is an okay build. Let's try it like this. We'll see how bad the heat problems are. We might have to moderate slightly. PPCs produce 35 heat on fire, so... It's, the sa it's almost the same as the two large lasers. I guess the benefit of the PPC is that it does do stability damage. We're producing a lot of stability damage already, so maybe we want to like really lean into that and have, it, um, have this thing be able to knock down other mechs. I'm going to leave it like this. This is how we're putting it in the thing. So, let's talk about the Flashpoint. There's a place that we wanted to go, a Flashpoint that we wanted to do. That place is 14 days from here. The Flashpoint expires in 21 days. I would love to take our new toy for a spin in that Flashpoint, but we are working on it a little bit slowly. So if we make this the, the highest priority, 
And then we repair the Centurions and the Griffin as well. Urban Mech, you probably are getting bumped to the bottom of the list here. We're looking at 19 days. We get this done before the Flashpoint expires. That's not a big problem. It's also enough time to allow Tire Fire to, to uh, get back in the saddle, which I appreciate. She's pretty useful. Maybe what we do here is we just fly over to the... Uh, we fly over to the Flashpoint and we hang out for a couple of days. Hang out for five days after we hit planet side. So I'm just thinking... I'd like to take my uh, my best and brightest in here. Basically, what I want to do is completely steamroll it. Uh, if we veer off course, I think there's pretty good odds that we just don't make it in time. I think, I think I'm down with the plan of let's fly over there and then maybe just take it easy for a couple of days. You know, our pilots could use some rest, honestly. I don't remember um, if you have... I don't remember if there are super set rewards for each flashpoint, and I know this is a flashpoint that I have done before, but my memory is completely shot. I have no idea what we're going to be up against here. Crackle enters your quarters and snaps to attention, glancing between you and Darius, because apparently Darius just hangs out in my quarters all day long. Darius stares the mech warrior down. We've had a complaint about you, soldier. Causing trouble in the mech bay? Oh no, wait, we called him in here. Darius still hangs out in my quarters all day long. You know, he just likes to have somebody to talk to. But that mech tech's got a grudge against me, sir. My mech's been opened up for way longer than anybody else's, and for no good reason. I was just trying to get things moving. Darius glances at you. Are you buying this, Commander? Uh, I am not, in fact, buying this. Hey, stay out of the mech bay until work is completed. The mech warrior nods, salutes, and leaves without a word. Later that week, Darius reports in. Well, whatever you told Crackle seems to have worked. The mech bay is quiet and productive again. Well, as quiet as the mech bay can be, anyway. That's weird. Darius is like, whatever you told Crackle seems to have worked. You were in the room, my friend. You, you absolutely know what I told Crackle. Alright, so we're going to do... I'm going to press the extravagant button here because we get the morale bonus immediately. And we'll just... We'll make it. We will figure it out. We will make the money. Because I want to be at 41 resolve, because being at 41 resolve means we're getting 35 points per round, but actually it's 39 because of our crab. This is going to be very, very good. We are going to have to make some money <laughs> here on Adrar. I'm not worried. I'm confident that the, the crab is going to open up a lot of new opportunities for us. A, a lance that is like crab, griffin, centurion, centurion has a lot of ability to take on difficult jobs. That's a that's a real, actual fighting lance. Again, the crab's mobility is going to be a problem. It's not impossible that we end up pulling one of those uh, large lasers and replacing it with jump jets. <laughs> that's a thing that could happen. And that way we would have a we'd have a thing that only sometimes generates heat like we wouldn't wouldn't need to jump all the time but we could at least change elevations like the biggest problem with with a mech like the king crab is that it's incredibly difficult to maneuver on uneven terrain and as you've seen many many times terrain tends to be uneven all right we will get to this joint venture we are going to sit for five days Feels bad, but I think it's right. I don't want to risk damaging the mechs anymore. I do want to look. This is more about curiosity than anything else. Because if we if we try some stuff and we got a mech damaged, then we'd have to wait even longer. We might actually miss the flashpoint altogether. I don't think I want to take that chance, so we're just going to do a slightly inefficient thing here. And then we're going to do some missions that ought to be actually pretty interesting. <laughs> provided that we come out of this flashpoint in one piece. So we are we are chilling until the griffin is complete. We're nearly broke, Commander. Darius, I need you to stop talking to me about our financial situation. Alright. Flashpoint available with two days to spare, right? Let's go through our pilots real quick and make sure everybody is as skilled up as possible. So the whole team is available. Commander? You are not quite at your ninth point of tactics yet, and that is definitely the only thing I would do with you. 
Uh, you were building up toward breaching shot, but I wonder if I should grab ta if I should grab sensor lock. I don't actually know if that's the way I want to build him. We'll hold on till bre until breaching shot. Uh, you could pick up called shot bonus, and probably you should. Right. Well, let's do that. And then what is what do these levels of piloting do? Melee hit an unsteady threshold. That's probably not worth the points, honestly. I'm here. Grizzly, uh, I think Grizzly was getting built up to replace Pancake, which is a real shame. So it's, it's a shame that that's a thing that needs to happen. Mech warrior training complete. So we'll work you up on piloting. Turned should probably just keep grabbing weapon uh, uh, gunnery for a little while. Actually, can we get to no? The first point of called shot bonus is at six tactics. Yeah, just take a gunnery. Training confirmed, Commander. Ready for orders. Sourdough is also pretty much all in on gunnery at this point, but we don't have any XP. You... Boy, what was I doing with it? I mean, clearly I'm building you toward ace pilot as well. We should have more than one ace pilot, so I guess that makes sense. Good to go. Firefire is not ready to do anything. Trampoline's not ready to do anything. I think we're not getting a lot of use out of our, um, out of our training simulators anymore because everybody has passed the XP threshold, but that's fine. They, they did some good stuff for us. And one more thing out of curiosity, what's happening in the store? Uh, so there's some partials, nothing terribly interesting. I've seen a lot of places where you can buy Marauder parts. Yeah, okay, nothing particularly cool. Let's do this flashpoint. Let's step in here. How Steiner requires your assistance in leading a Davian Steiner convoy across a broad swath of hostile terrain. Payment will be remitted upon safe delivery of the convoy's payload. Also, some uncommon items. Yeah, we uh, we definitely need to get paid here. It's not as bad as it looks. We have a ton of inventory that we could liquidate. We have like fifty plus large lasers. We have a bunch of jump jets. I would be I would be willing to sell off the locusts if that's what it takes. You know, we we are not going to lose the game, but hopefully we can get to a place where we don't even have to do that. Welcome to Adrar, Commander Corpsington. I thank you for your promptness, as always. House Steiner needs you to escort an unarmed convoy to a reinforced mech bay on the western tip of Black Earth Plateau. The safety of this convoy is of paramount importance. Its cargo is both precious and rare. Black Earth Plateau. Aimed for the high concentration of volcanic ash in the location's native soil. Okay. So a lot of this planet is uh, heavily irradiated, huh? That's information that I don't feel like I had before we landed. I don't know that we've done a lot of work for House Steiner yet, for or against. Uh, they're also the Lyran Commonwealth, led by House Steiner. Uh, in spite of the destruction of the succession wars, overall industrial output and average standard of living exceeded that of any other successor state. This is the, this it, it's very much like a modern view of Germany sort of place. Yeah? What's the payload? In truth, Mr. Vertanen, that is none of your concern. But in the interest of transparency, I will answer your question. I hope that you will recognize this gesture as the symbol of friendship that it is. The trucks are carrying the final components for a new form of battle mech, the first product of a marriage between Davion inventiveness and Steiner industry. It's quite an achievement, I assure you, and House Liao would like nothing better than to take it from us. All right, well, we won't let that happen. Very good, Commander. Now, let us discuss the complications that will stand in your way. Yeah, there always have to be some, right? The convoy is currently hidden from the Eyes and will remain so until you meet it at the rendezvous point. Unfortunately, there is but a single road between the convoy and its destination, and that road is continuously patrolled by units of the Liao Reserves. We have solid intel on the size and composition of one of these patrol groups, a unit that we have dubbed Sentry Team Alpha. Unfortunately, that's where our battlefield intelligence ends. So tell us about this Sentry Team Alpha. If we choose to engage while they're in the AO, what will we be going up against? A mid-range hunter-killer lance, with long-range fire support available as backup. Not an ideal configuration to go up against on an ex escort mission, I know, but we have no intel at all on what else the Liao Reserves may be fielding. If you choose to deploy outside of Sentry Team Alpha's patrol window, you could find yourself face to face with a full assault lance. Or perhaps not, we just don't know. 
And so, my friend, you have a choice to make. Will you deploy against Sentry Team Alpha, or will you roll the dice on the unknown? I don't envy you the decision, but as the commander in the field, it's yours to make. Well, to be perfectly honest, I'm a little bit less worried about, like, short-range spotters plus long-range uh, long range fire support I think is actually pretty easy for us to deal with. We're good at killing mechs at short-range quickly, and then the long-range mechs will have to uh, re-establish visual contact and we'll close in on them then. I think we can take them. You got intel on Sentry Team Alpha. I'll take that over a question mark any day. Very good, Commander. I'll see to it that the convoy leader is prepared and ready to depart. Best of luck on the planet's surface. I'll be monitoring your progress from here. Yeah, maybe I've just uh, <laughs> maybe I've just put us in a terrifying position, but I think we'll be okay. Two and a half skulls should be doable with our new lance. So we have eyes on Sentry Team Alpha. Expect moderate to heavy resistance on the path to your objective. As a reminder, it is absolutely vital that this convoy reach its destination. Do not disappoint me. Alright, I think we can do this. So, max pay is really high, but it's also a two and a half skull mission, er, yeah, yeah, two and a half skull mission, so it's possible that there will be good salvage here. Given our current position, I feel like it would be prudent to take at least this much money, maybe all of the money? That's a difference of over 200,000 sea bills. I'm gonna do it this way. We need to reestablish our operational cushion. Especially since our current um, Argo repairs are about to come to an end. Alright, so I think the layout of the mechs is like... Griffin, both the Centurions, and then the Kid Crab back here. It acting last. I think that we want the Griffin to lead most of the time. And then how do we want to distribute pilots? I'm just going to pull everybody here. This is not a good time to be worried about the, the distribution of XP and stuff. We need to be effective. So, my inclination is to put Returned in the King Crab, because we're going to need help with the heat management, and obviously, like, Bulwark and stuff. 1360 base armor. Uh, and then Tire Fire is probably driving this Centurion, the one with the UAC. Then we want somebody else who's a good shot, so Crackle and Cruise are both available for the other Centurion. It's probably got to be Cruz, because again, we're like, we're very, um... You know what, though? We could put Cruz in the Griffin, because she also has the heat management abilities. We're going to a jungle biome, which I believe doesn't really affect heat output. Actually, the, um, the high degree of moisture in the air might improve heat sinking. So then who's driving the other Centurion? Right now we have no sensor lock, but I think I want it to be a person with high gunnery. Yeah. Oh, no, that's not true. We don't have no sensor lock. We have tire fire. It's just, like, not an ideal sensor lock. This leaves out Sourdough. Sourdough could be the person in the Griffin instead. I may find that I miss my sensor lock, but I think this is the way we're going to do it. Notice the King Crab operates on one initiative. Nothing, nothing this big is very fast. That's just physics, you know? Alright, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited by the prospect of deploying the Alpha Strike of the King Crab on something. It's just, it's just so much bullet, right? Like, you're firing about two tons of, of metal at people. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be a beautiful, horrible, definite war crime sort of thing. Ah, Steiner isn't even supposed to have a presence in this system, so be careful. When the Capellans pick you up on sensors, I imagine all hell's going to break loose. Well, we brought as much hell as we could. Hopefully it comes down on our side. Command interface initiated. I've marked Graf Stieglitz Bradford's rendezvous point on your map, Commander. Convoy leader, do you copy? Roger that, Oliveira. We are all packed up and ready to roll. We're under orders to beeline it to the mech bay as soon as you reach the rendezvous point, so I hope your mech warriors can keep up. Yeah, I'm also worried about that. Fair warning, I've been hearing a lot of Capellan military chatter on the comms lately. Won't take them long to find us after we roll out. Alright, so... Good to go. Uh... Yes, heat sinking increased by 10%. 
So we have to make it to here, and then we probably walk them along up to this landing pad. That seems doable. Oh, there are spore clouds here. So if you step in the spore field, uh, plus four difficulty to hit you because the spores mess with sensors or some everything messes with sensors. But also, any unit that is in a spore field takes 20% extra damage when it gets hit. The, spore, the corrosive spores are softening the metal. Something to be very, very careful about. Sometimes you want to use them to, uh, to avoid getting shot at, but it can be very dangerous. King Crab, this is a full sprint right here. This is as far as it can move. It started the turn in front of the Centurions, and the Centurions are already quite slow. Don't need to tell me twice. I think our play here is... I read you, Commander. Moving out. They're not going to move forward till we step into the capture zone. So we move the Griffin up near the capture zone, but don't get in. Get the Centurions Golly, mounted up on a ridge somewhere. Moving out. And we wait until the King Crab has had a chance to get in front of the zone. You guys, get up here. That's right, this one. This one has the single jump jet. Oh, what am I doing? The King Crab can't jump up there. It doesn't have any jets. Order, so I'm going to have you move to, like, here. Copy that, Commander. What can I do? I hear ya. Okay, you can just barely make the jump. And then the King Crab needs to <laughs> needs to do its absolute best to get over here. Ready to rock. I feel like the Centurions are maybe in an okay spot. It's the King Crab I'm really worried about. Waiting on you, Commander. I do wish that once you've uh, once you've tabbed past an initial mech, it wouldn't jump back to that mech you constantly bet, yeah. afterward. Like, just let me actually cycle through. I'm gonna brace one more time. I think we need to let the king crab get this much of a head start. Uh huh. Good for now. All right. Down that there. should. I just. I just. Just did secure the convoy rally point, though. Maybe we could get a move on here. Alright, ready to roll out, Commander. Keep the hostiles off of us. We can get Stiglitz Bradford's payload from point A to point B, but we aren't equipped to fight. Already got readings. Enemy detected. So, some little guys. These are Slipner APCs, so each one of them has a pair of medium lasers. You know, that's not nothing. Kind of think this is a situation where I want to just reserve down, let them come forward, and then we can uh, we can try to brutalize them at the end of the turn, and then again maybe before. I don't know. We're not. We're probably not actually in a position to be able to go before them under any circumstances. Oh right, I want to reserve down because I actually want the crab to go forward first. I think. Well, is that true? Maybe I do want the griffin forward first. I hear really ya. leave myself the ability to do that this turn, but we can sprint up, get into position. Let's see if King Crab... Okay, the King Crab can get vision of one enemy. The trucks having parked everywhere in front of me is actually like the most annoying thing. I am not going to fire my guns at that Jenner, but we'll go ahead and hit it with the lasers. Well, we tried. Skipper. Right, we definitely want you to go next because I want the UAC mech to go last and have the cleanest I'm shot. Can we get into that same... Yeah, 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 here we go. We want that same side arc. Coordinates received. I think, yeah, just give him everything. everything I've got. A Jenner can pose a very real threat to vehicles. Run when you had the chance. Let's get fired up. There's work to do. 
All right, so obviously we're already at 68 resolve. What can that's, I do for you? That's how that works. It's pretty good. That's a pretty good number to be at. They replaced the old Jenner with a new Jenner. It's also some kind of 45 ton something. I mean, we should move up if only so that the, uh, the vehicles are not the first target of the enemies. Can I jump? I can jump forward into cover. I think I probably should, even though that's going to cause some heat problems. So what is that? That's a Vindicator with a PPC and basically nothing else on it. And then we got something else reading unknown pretty far down. Well, feels like I should just go for this, right? We can do some real damage here. So the uh, PPC is probably on the right arm, because it's always on the right arm. Just go for right here. See if we can open him up. Be a little bit cavalier with our heat on account of uh, the humidity. Okay, whatever that is, it's reading 50 tons. It's not uh, not totally inconsiderable. We also do need to hit the uh, the Jenner with something before the end of the round, just so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't feel like it can focus entirely on the vehicles. Maybe we'll have the King Crab work on that. And we're getting some good damage through. What's that sector looking at? 37. Waiting for orders. You know, it's probably worth using a precision strike here. We might, we might be able to actually knock that arm off. Got it. Pretty good shot from the auto cannon, but I think only yeah, only one of the auto con cannon volleys made contact. Not ideal. See, the, honestly, the APCs might be able to finish it off if they get lucky. Or they might just sprint instead of moving and shooting, which is also fine. You know, it, it sure would be good to get off of the map quickly. Right, well, one of them... One of them had the wherewithal to attempt something. Oof, those are pretty bad odds. Over here, at least I'm not firing through my own mech. Yeah, stay on the road. So we're just gonna tap him with the lasers again. I'm just trying to get his attention. Would probably get his attention better if I made contact, though. Because the Jenner can destroy a vehicle very easily. Especially at this range. Okay, it is it is paying attention. Good to go. Well, it feels like I would be. Very foolish indeed not to try to finish that guy's uh, arm off, right? What are we looking at here? One. Do I even need the uh, the aim? Maybe we should save the... I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this without the aim. 20 LRMs. Any one of them does the job. Okay. The auto cannon got there. Steady again, which is not super relevant. I sure hope that uh, that fifty tonner down there is nothing scary. Waiting on you, Commander. I mean, we could go find out, I guess. Probably ought to go find out. It is in fact a Centurion Nine A. That AC ten. I think we're in another one of these knock off the AC ten arm type situations, and he's got the ammo loaded right behind it, which. You know, makes a lot of sense, but also definitely creates some vulnerability. Yeah, it's tough with the with the forty percent damage reduction. That's tough. Looks like we can't get a direct angle anywhere. Yeah, the terrain's too uneven. With that hill's right in front of him. So what we'll do instead is move up with you. Work on this Vindicator, I think. Uh, we can let the UAC breathe for a second. Let's 
that's some pretty good shooting, actually. When I shoot you, you'll take it and like it. Okay, that was a pretty solid hit. There's an awful lot of missiles in that part of the mech. We should maybe be careful about that. On, work that right torso. Ooh, headshots. Yeah, we could just kill the pilot, I suppose. If you guys can put together enough random machine gun fire to the dome. All right, that was also some pretty solid shooting. I'm not going to say that I didn't, like, loosen the jar for him there, but he's the one who got it open. It's worth something. Now, you, you might be close enough for the king crab to punch you. Nope, normal movement for the king crab is so tiny. I mean, do I want to just... Do I want to just let him have it with the autocannons? We have very limited ammunition. But... We should hit him with one of the autocannons. It doesn't need to be both. This is two shots at 60% each. Either one of them making contact is devastating. Yeah, knock the whole right half of that mech off. Most of its weapon systems are gone. Enemy mech. Critical damage detected. We definitely need to be cautious. Ow. That's not so bad. The Griffin, the Griffin gets a good solid punch here. And since you decided to fire on your last turn, I get to shoot you without bulwark up. Let's get the UAC Mac to a position where we have some kind of shot. Alright, well, huh? it's actually a pretty ugly shot, like, past this hill and everything, but Tire Fire is extremely good at her job. Unfortunately, Heat's going to be a little bit of an issue here. I think this is the right move, though. Uh -huh. If we can get that AC-10 off of him, I'm going to feel so much more comfortable. Uh, we don't really have a lot of choices here. Can I back up enough to tighten... Okay, there we go. I back up onto the ridge. You got it. What are we looking at here? One health in that torso section. Or a hit to the arm. Either one works. We need one missile to go to the right place. Alright. Critical hit. And incidentally, we've done an awful lot of damage to the rest of his weapon areas as well. Which makes me feel a little bit more confident just turning around and punching this Jenner, which I think is the right move. Take the shot from here. It'll let me move around to this side, which is unusual. No, I'll take it from right here. This is the this side that's already partially opened. Okay. You just reach in there and pull the pilot out. Uh, I'm right here. I'm ten. I'm ten feet from you. I'm huge. There's no way you don't see me. Also, I'm the only reason you're still alive. So maybe you know, watch your mouth. Just think for a minute. Think about the mechs you've seen. Think how this would have gone without an escort. I'm just. I'm just saying, be nice to me is all. I actually managed to strip the center torso armor completely. And if they can get that leg out from under him, this will be real easy. That's exactly what happened, in fact. So, 60 center torso health, 6 on that. Yeah, he's dead. This is over. Oh, that's actually it's actually over. The pilot died. <laughs> that knockdown was a little bit too much for him. I mean, there's probably a lot of force. You experience a lot of, uh, a lot of forces when the giant robot you're driving falls over like that. Just picked up a new blip on my long-range sensors, Commander. You're about to have company. All Capellan troops, destroy that convoy! Your families will be held accountable if you fail. Wow! Not even trying to not sound like the bad guys. This is definitely a concern. These guys have outpaced me a little bit here. In particular, I'm worried about tire fire catching up. 
Or wait, I don't remember which which mech is being driven by. Okay, yeah, this is Cruise. No, this is Tire Fire. I'm worried about Crackle catching up then. And unfortunately, one of the mech, one of the units is not in the dropship yet. Not in the dropship zone. Ain't that always the way? All right. Well, this may well be the situation where we want to use Tire Fire's sensor lock. Oh, except I can't. Well, then this may well be the situation where, because I can't do anything, I want to just reserve down. Yeah, I think so. Good luck, guys. Things are actually so far ahead that I cannot attack them. These APCs are, are fairly heavily armored. Oh, oh. Okay, structure exposed on a vehicle is usually a pretty bad sign. Good to go. Alright, but now we can see enemies, which means we can shoot enemies. Let's jump all the way in. Affirmative. Do that thing that Cruz does so well. I probably should have turned my body a little bit. And these are both Trebs. So this, they're the same guy. Okay, so it's two, two lasers on the right side, one laser on the left. Um, hmm. Not really sure what the right move is here. Shoot the front of this guy and just try to core him as hard as possible. I, let's go in through the side on this dude. Do we want to try to go through his leg? Now, the left torso is... The, the torso sections are soft and full of explosives. It's perfectly reasonable to just do this. And if, we, if all we hit is the arm, then we can just break the LRM launcher. Obviously, an ammo explosion is a little bit more exciting. I can't believe your weapons function at this range. I guess it's an AC-5, not an AC-10, so... Oh, the autocannon does not work at this range. But we can do this. Any one of these could touch off the ammo bin. Or just do enough damage. That's also good. <laughs> good to go. Inflicted some nasty on that some bitch is what he said, unprompted, as though it was a normal thing to say. On my way. All right, Tire Fire's mech is still overheated a little bit, but I think we gotta we gotta try not to pull any punches here. Again, a lot of what's happening right now is about making the enemy mechs feel like they can't afford to aim at the convoy. Alright, all of the units are in the dropship area. King Crab is in full sprint mode. There's no, no doubt in my mind that that is the move. Alright, objective secured with the bonus. And we could get to the evac zone, or we could just, you know, evac the way we usually do it. It's easier to reach the dropship if you can stand on a pile of enemy corpses. Oh, that thing is happening where for some reason there's a non-combat turn when the uh, convoy escapes. That's pretty annoying. That's not a thing that I am very fond of. <laughs> That said, if they just want to use all this free time to move toward me, I feel pretty okay about that. I, I, I love being closer to the enemy. Commander? I think we want to jump away to um, make it easier to hit this guy's arm and also to make it so that my left side is not as available. It's actually kind of a tricky... Maybe I want to jump this way instead. Yeah, something like this, because we got to watch that that left arm. We're starting to get a little soft. Here we go. Now, that guy over there does not have bulwark, so we're going to cool and vent, obviously. Just spray a bunch of the hot coolant all over the uh, all over that Jenner, and then let's go ahead and precision strike this guy. And it looks like we could probably just go for that leg. There's 36 health there, so it wouldn't take too much to put him down. Or we could try to knock the arm off. And the arm's the easy way to lower his damage output, but if the leg goes down, we can probably just kill him, right? I'm gonna go for the leg. Turns out, uh... 
It, I blew up every part of him except for his leg. Very questionable maneuver from the enemy mech here. Moving closer to the king crab on purpose. All right, so we need to worry about that that locust a tiny little bit. I think the crabs probably got the trebuchet under control. So other trebuchet could certainly uh, certainly stand to be finished off. I mean, we have a pretty advantageous position here. What do you have left? Nothing. Yeah, and you're not nearly in melee range. Okay, let's fire at the locust because again, I have faith. I have faith in the king crab. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm do there. this. Yeah, Locust is just, you know, it's it's not very much mech, is the thing. Waiting for orders. Gonna reserve down, that guy's gonna run forward. Then we're gonna reserve down again, because I definitely want the crab to have the next turn. Alright, you cannot get anywhere near melee range. Crab punches are exceedingly rare. What we can do is turn on all of the weapons and uh, do this thing for the first time. I don't know, just aim at the middly bits somewhere. And straight center torso destroyed. I hear ya. That was a satisfying amount of damage. Let's put you up here, and once again, heat is an issue. We uh I tend to build mechs to run pretty hot. The thing is, uh, if you're given a choice between fire the weapons and not fire the weapons, I don't, that's not a real choice. I want to fire the weapons, please. I want to fire all of the weapons if possible. Did you just pass your turn, sir? Did you not even take the melee to which you are entitled? Copy that, Commander. We might get to crab punch him. I'm going to try to crab punch him. Honestly, the crab is so, yeah, it's so slow it can't, oh no, it can. It can just barely get over there. Look at that. It punches for 125 damage. Get him. Put your entire chassis right through his side. Can't believe he's still up. It's 59 health left. His center torso was in pretty good shape before the shot. Um, you know what? Actually, the griffin's fine. The griffin should be able to do some reasonable damage here. Although we might... No, no, no. We're not going to overheat. Yeah, we have, uh, we have some very serious close-range explosion potential. If the griffin and the crab get on somebody, that's just that's way too much damage for anybody to, to deal with. That's it, Commander Corpsington. Payload has been secured. On behalf of my entire crew, thank you. We never would have made it here without you, and you almost didn't even make it with me. Uh, you better hold that thought. This isn't over yet. Long-range sensors are picking up inbound Capellan dropships. ETA 45 minutes. That doesn't even give me enough time to fly you back for repairs. This is a problem, XO. Then allow me to propose a solution. I will authorize my mech techs to rush the activation of our new battle mech, the HTC-3F Hatchet Man. It will stand in place of one of your own mechs in the upcoming fray. Uh, yeah, we'll take the help, Graf Stieglitz Bradford. From the sound of things, we're gonna need it. I don't... I don't need a... The thing is, I don't need a Hatchet Man. <laughs> I really appreciate... The thing you're saying there, but I don't... I mean, actually, like, actually, what will we... I think we'll sub out the crab? I kind of remember the next mission, and I don't think the crab's going to be able to move around enough to get the job done. So there's a real <laughs> there's a real solid chance here that we are going to sub a king crab out for a hatchet man on this one. Feels like kind of a goofy thing to do, though. I mean, the Hatchet Man, for those of you who are not familiar, the Hatchet Man is a fine, fine mech. It's uh, like 40 tons or something like that. It carries an AC-10. And it's called a Hatchet Man because it actually has a giant hatchet. A big metal hatchet. You can run up to people and chop them real good with it. And I'm not trying to say that that's not excellent. Because it is excellent. But also, the King Crab punches for 125 damage. I think this is right, though. I think the, the King Crab just doesn't have the maneuverability for the thing we're about to do. And the Hatchet Man is fast. You gotta give it that. This feels really dumb. We just spent so much money on this thing, but I, I think we can't afford to use it. 
Do we want to bring in returned? No, nah, we probably not. I was going to say, like, maybe over tire fire to help control the heat of the, uh, the good centurion. I need to name these mechs. I think we're going to run it like this. This probably seems stupid. Uh, maybe it is stupid, but this mission takes place on a mountain. There's a lot of elevation changes and running through jungle, and uh, I'm afraid the king crab's just never going to get to shoot at anybody. And I mean, like, even at long range, with two large lasers, it's not like it's a bad mech. But it's just not, um, it's not always appropriate. Now, if we outfitted it with LRMs instead of close range weaponry, we probably could use it in almost every situation. There's, you never get into a place where you're like, geez, I wish I had anything other than these LRMs. Although I guess actually, with the way, um, with the way that the ECMs work, with the way that all of the electronic warfare stuff works, it's really about disabling LRM locks, right? So maybe, maybe we'll find that it is the case that sometimes an LRM mech is bad. Command interface initiated. Commander, I'm afraid that Dr. Murad's sensor readings have been confirmed. A large contingent of Lao reserves are en route to the mech bay at this moment, and they are eager to strike. I suggest that you strike back at them with this. Meet the HTC-3F Hatchet Man, House Steiner's new melee specialized brawler. You'll find it perfectly equipped to hack these Capellan peasants in two, I assure you. That's a hell of a machine, I've got to say. The hatchet makes me feel downright tingly. Oh, just wait until you've seen it in action. We all tingle. To that point, Commander, eliminate the enemy and keep our assets safe. Key members of the Davian Steiner Alliance will be watching. So yeah, the, the terrain here. We're gonna be we're gonna be fighting on this side. We're gonna be fighting on that side. Can you imagine the King Crab trying to get from over here to over here? A nightmare. Move order received. Centurions should be able to pretty much just stay up on the uh, up on the ridge. And the Griffin and the Hatchet Man can both jump back and forth. We got company. All right, defend all target buildings from destruction. Probably unrealistic, but we can we can defend three of them. That's probably gonna work. Just gotta remember, enemies will tend to target us if we target them first. Boy, that sure is a lot of dudes, though. Uh, where's the Griffin? What can I do for you? You can get the hell down here and shoot somebody. I leap, I soar. Oh, camera. Whoa. All right, that locust doesn't actually have a lot of evasion. I think we can probably just paste him. Yep. <laughs> God, I love the Griffin. God, I love close range shotgun max. Yeah, yeah, we're going to lose a building right away. No big deal. The first turn a new group of enemies spawns in. It's often the case that there's literally nothing you can do about this because like okay, we could we could shoot that guy before his turn, and that would probably draw him off. Copy that. We should do it if we can, but a lot of the time it just like there will literally be nothing you can do. Uh, the pilot they gave me seems to be garbage. He seems to be a garbage pilot. Uh, no reason not to fire all the weapons, but I don't expect to get a lot accomplished here. Mostly we're just getting this thing's attention. Hmm, interesting. Didn't feel comfortable firing the autocannon in this situation. What are your orders, Skipper? Wonder why. That would make a lot of sense. Alright, I think we probably want to use the... Waiting on you, Commander. I want to use the Centurions to start picking at that Blackjack. I think that's the next most dangerous thing. I was really hoping to be able to fire into his side quadrant, but... Got it. We have a precision strike, it's okay. So the Blackjack is packing two large lasers, and he will do significant damage to these buildings if we're not pretty quick at picking him up. And we could try to just core him since we're shooting from the front. He doesn't really have that much center torso health. Maybe we get lucky. Honestly, looks pretty good. That's a lot of damage. Another hit like that and you're toast. I do wish it wouldn't constantly close this on me. Okay, yeah, so his whole his whole torso is looking pretty rough. But unfortunately, we can't just fire at the torso cuz we have to um we have to launch something at this guy if we want him to do anything other than shoot a building down. I'm rolling. Let's see what you got. 
It's a shame that auto cannon hit would have been very good. Alright, I think we should be okay. The one thing that Matchstick has going for him is that he has Bulwark. Waiting for orders. Uh, we can... Let's see. Waiting for orders. We can have the Griffin just run up and try to pop this thing. Can't quite make it into the trees without jumping. But yeah, jump like... Can I get small laser range, maybe? I can get small laser range. I'm not comfortable with how close it puts me to the javelin, but this'll do. We're Got definitely going to have to vent. Uh, let me check. Yep. <laughs> yeah, extremely. And this is even with a bonus to our uh, to our heat sinking from the environment. Do I want to also precision strike him, or do I want to just maybe... Because we don't really need to precision strike the other guy, right? We're, we're just going to fire at his middle parts and everything's going to explode. I think we just go center. I will say, the snub PPC does have a, a bit of a downside in that it, uh, it doesn't cluster very well, it feels like. Shots kind of go all over the place, but still, it's pretty good. You have 57 center. I think I'm going to shoot at the blackjack with this one and shoot at the other guy with the other one. More of a chance of getting a kill here. Enemy eliminated. Commander. Alright, pretty easy cleanup. We do not want to get down there if we don't absolutely have to because there are going to be things spawning on the other side of the map, I'm pretty sure. Make sure we are staying mobile. Tell me what to shoot. <laughs> Somehow managed to not get that kill. Alright, he has yes. seven center torso health. The javelin is definitely not that much of a danger. This guy hasn't had his turn yet, so if we don't if we don't kill him now, he's gonna get a turn. I am opposed to that idea. I might actually jump down here, just because this makes it awkward for the Javelin to take a, a shot at the Griffin's back. Eh, it doesn't really, though. Fire and jump jet. Okay. Let's do this. I was gonna say, did you seriously somehow manage to not do enough damage there? That would have been an incredible feat. Sensor trace. Looks like enemy reinforcements. Ooh, coming in on the top of the hill. That's interesting. What are we looking at here? Another blackjack. I didn't get to see all of that. Okay, the, I mean the the hatchet man did absorb some of the fire. Send me a real opponent. What's up, boss? What are we looking at up here? It looks like a blackjack, trebuchet 5N, something in the 45 ton range. So basically nothing terrifying. I might have the hatchet man just finish you off real quick. Ah, uh, melee attack doesn't allow me to stand in the trees though. Ya. Definitely makes me nervous. Uh, we probably want to just try to m try to burn one of these guys out. So the uh, the blackjack BJ1 design has an ammo bin in the center torso by default. I think I've said a lot of words about why I think that's a real stupid idea. Let's take advantage of what a stupid idea that is. Can I get like a point of evasion while still being able to do this, just in case? I, if I if I gain a point of evasion, I have to lose my shot or lose my cover. Can't move far enough while staying in the trees otherwise. Okay, I'll just stay still, that's fine. And then we could precision strike. But honestly, I don't know that I need to. He's actually pretty soft all over. I'm just gonna go for it. Try to bank up some, uh... Oh! We knocked his head off. That is not how I was expecting that to go. It was part of the joy of not aiming, is that sometimes you hit something fun. Okay, they are, of course, after the buildings. We can lose up to three more. And I believe that there is no, um... What can I do for you? There's no bonus for keeping buildings alive, except for the keep all of them alive bonus. If you don't manage that, then it doesn't matter how many fall, as long as you don't fail. This will give me vision of whatever that is up there. Okay, it's just a Vindicator. And I mean, we are on the right side of it. 
Yeah, just try to take that arm off. Get rid of its PPC. I think I'm comfortable with this. Well, these guys are in rough shape already. They they just showed up. And now that that guy's not really a threat anymore, I feel way more comfortable doing this thing. I do have the fast animations on. Uh, let me know if you would prefer if I go back. So, this guy's not really... I kind of just want to finish the Vindicator off if we can. He does have that Bulwark, although he also has a completely full stability damage bar. I will say that if we had brought the crab and just kept it up here to wait for those guys to land on it, it would have been pretty okay. Aha, there are enemies on this side. It's alright, I'm feeling like we're, uh, we're going to be okay here. Something tells me that we might just manage. But yeah, so you can see, like, the Hatchet Man is a fast-moving mech that's available early that melees for 110 damage because of the axe. And that's... That's significant. That's a powerful thing, right? Hmm. How do we want to deal with you? I don't really want to jump up and fire because I don't... Like, the heat is going to be a problem. Can't cool invent everything forever. But maybe I do jump up and do this and just try to do some damage. No sweat. Yeah, alright. Oh, precision. Strike to drop the initiative. Turn off the PPC. Turn off the laser. You gotta turn off an SRM no matter what. So you may as well turn the laser back on. And let's pierce the ammo bin if we can. Didn't get there. This Vindicator is functionally useless now. Still got to worry about these dudes. Uh, Good to go. It is definitely in our best interest to reduce the number of eyes on these buildings, right? If we can get rid of, uh, if we can get rid of their ability to see the buildings, it's going to be a lot easier for us to defend them. Ah, trying really, really hard to touch off an explosion there. Uh, this might be a good time to back up. Well, it looks like it's not actually easy for me to find a direct shot. Oh yeah, look at that line of sights all screwed up because of the rock. Well... Alright, let's do this. I'm going to back up to here. Nope, I'm going to back up to here because this is where I still have my shot. We'll do this thing and see what comes of it. I'm a little worried that we're not actually taking any of the uh, killing power off of that trebuchet. Like, we're hitting it a lot, but not to much effect. Waiting on you, Commander. And it, it has a very effective cover down there. I think I'm just going to come over here and throw a punch because we need to, we need to let the Centurion cool down a little bit. And there's more where that, came from. that pilot's got to be in terrible shape by now. Also, his mech has, like, very little... The total amount of stability left on this mech is very small. Reporting. Structural damage. Oh, it's on now. Alright, we got inspired. Something's gotta happen here. Confirmed. Maybe this is a hatchet man kind of thing? Send the hatchet man in and try to cut that arm off. We can probably, yeah, we can probably take that arm at the very least. Copy that. Confirm. Oh, or you can just hit him in the center torso. That's Hell also yeah. fine. I love the idea of a, a mech-sized axe. Waiting for orders. It's just a really cool thing. I don't know if it's an effective or smart thing, but it's a really cool thing. Copy that, Commander. <laughs> you showed him. I need a new target. What can I do for you? Cover plus guarded plus bulwark, it turns out, does not really defeat melee attacks. Nothing stops the melee attack. The high road. I have I've not really watched any other Battletech streamers aside from uh, Waypoint when they used to do Mecha Mondays. So I don't know if 
everybody else plays this way, I might punch more than other people do. It's just so much fun. It's fun every single time. So let's see, my right side is pretty busted. Let's make sure we're right, leaning left here. Oh, wow, that's a catapult. That is a nice mech. It also has a very distinctive look. Look at all those missile bays. Look at them. It's not actually that much more dangerous than a trebuchet in practice, but it certainly looks dangerous. Let's see if we can soften it up a little bit. So it came in with that poorly maintained armor debuff, but even so, the thing is, uh, the thing is big and well armored. Turns out 50% of a lot of armor is still kind of a lot of armor. Ooh. That's an LRM carrier. And that's a 70 ton. I bet that's one of those moving on five. I bet that's one of those urban assault vehicles. Which is to say we really, really don't want to let it get close. How are we going to deal with this? What is the best way to deal with this? I mean, obviously, we need to hit that side again. And get one of those LRMs off there. But it is... Moving pretty carefully to try to deny us that opportunity. Wants us firing into the into the left quadrant. Smart. It's too smart. It's worryingly smart. Uh alright. Yeah, we can't we cannot get into a place where we have a direct fire on the on the front. Oh, uh, we could just try to take his other arm or even his leg. Taking his leg would make our lives a lot easier. You just don't have the raw damage output to do it, though. You could, but you'd have to hit literally every shot. You know what? Maybe the LRM carrier is the first target. I'm there. That is, in fact, an urban assault vehicle. Okay. I got you. Alright, that needed to happen. 60 LRMs, not, not acceptable. Can the hatchet man get a shot? He can, actually. Roger. You know, if we precision shot into the arm and he makes it, he does take it off. On it. <laughs> he somehow managed to hit the other arm. I hear ya. Well, you know what? That's actually going to be okay as well, I think. So I can't quite jump over to any place that makes sense. I can run to here. I think that's what I do. Don't need to tell me twice. I'm not afraid of the striker. We could fire just the snub PPC at this thing and maybe kill it, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go after him with it. Let's vent all the coolant because we're gonna fire all the guns again. Let's try real hard to get through this arm. I mean, maybe I don't need to spend this. We're gonna get through that arm. That's yeah, it's not a problem. Let's just do a normal attack. Turn everything back on and give it to him. Uh -huh. Okay. Huh? It's a good start. It's a good start. Commander? And now somebody with a little bit more long range weaponry can take on the urban assault vehicle. So you're in rough shape all over the place, though. I'm going to leave my left side facing the enemies, but I'm concerned about this. I mean, it probably doesn't have to be everything, right? In fact, just the UAC? Maybe the UAC and the LRMs. So we could go, like... They put a little bit of damage on that guy, I guess. Oops, no, that's not what I want. Uh, let's turn the large laser off. No, turn the medium laser off. Yeah. So we large laser that guy. Here we go. Okay, the LRMs were back up in case the UAC did a bad thing. Make sure we were getting it. Oh! I didn't actually check the numbers. I didn't know that a large laser right shot now. was going to be lethal by itself. Alright, well this thing is in grave danger. That has made possibly the worst possible choice. Let's go after the healthy mech with Bulwark. What's up, boss? 
feels like we are maybe going to be okay here. We'll just uh, we'll just get aggressive. Targeting for an Inflicted heavy damage. The thing is, we got all those missile launchers off there, and he still has a hundred damage worth of lasers that he can fire at us. It's not like we're in the clear. We might be about to be in the clear. Ready to rock. Waiting for orders. Let's see, can you get a direct shot if you run down the hill enough? Nope, it's just a really tough angle. Well, if we can't get it, we can't get it. That's fine. Just get him with the LRM-15. Yeah, that's definitely a, uh, a higher class of opposition than we have been facing. That's the last of them, Commander. Nicely done. This deployment has proven to be an excellent test of our new battle mech's combat capabilities. And, uh, boss? Moving forward, let's keep our eyes open for another Hatchet Man or three. I can think of so many things I could do with a chassis like that. Mission successful. It's actually not super versatile, in my opinion. I mean, uh, not to say that it... It's not quite correct to say that it's not versatile, but the way it's outfitted, and especially with like you wanting to be able to be close enough to people to use the, the, the hatchet, the way it's outfitted by default is kind of optimal. You could try to do some other stuff with it, but like in any any situation where you're attaching long range weaponry to it, it really feels like, well, why don't I just do this on a different a different mech, right? All right, I would love to grab. Ooh, we could finish a Shadowhawk, and then we could finish a Javelin as well. But like, why? I don't really. Uh, the Vindicator wouldn't be terrible either, but I kind of want to take a piece of that catapult home. Let's do that. The catapult's a great mech. Maybe we'll get lucky and they'll give us the Vindicator piece anyway. And then some equipment that has some stuff on it. Yeah, it's all fine. Okay, they gave me a Locust piece and nothing else. Still, I'm excited to have completed our Shadowhawk. I don't necessarily think a Shadowhawk's a great mech, but it is a pretty large mech. And it's good to have a couple of backups. The fact that uh, right now, if we had a mech take serious structural damage, we'd have to go down to smalls is definitely a problem. So we went to all that trouble. Uh, not just the stuff that happened on camera, but, you know, all the all the burning down easy missions off camera stuff uh, to acquire that king crab. And we ended up not even using it for half of that mission. But it's fine. It's going to it's going to give us a lot of value over the course of the game. Well done, Commander Corpsington. Very well done indeed. And the Hatchet Man proved its worth admirably as well. I'm looking at telemetry from its combat computers now. The luminaries at the new Avalon Institute of Science will be pleased. That's a hell of a machine. Wouldn't mind getting my hands on one of our own. In due time, perhaps you may. I can make you no promises, of course. But I would very much enjoy it if such a mech were to find its way onto the Argo. Stranger things have happened. Well, we'll all be looking forward to the day that happens, Graf Stiglitz Bradford. Aye, Commander, that we will. Until then, I bid you good hunting and a very fond farewell. Your job here is done. Politely telling us to get the hell off his planet. I bet you a hundred sea bills that Stiglitz Bradford wanted House Liao's troops to attack us at that base. It gave him a ready-made excuse to test his hatchet man against a bunch of live targets. Yeah, sounds like the kind of thing he'd do. But you know what? I don't care. At the end of the day, we got paid for our efforts and our client walked away happy. That's about the best resolution a company like ours could ask for, regardless of the Graf's underlying motives. Yeah, nobody died. It's a real step up. I'm right, Meyer. We did good on this one, so let's try not to overthink it. Back to your stations, everyone. Let's find some more trouble to get ourselves into. Well, this is a whole planet full of trouble to get, us, get ourselves into. That's a good payout. And we receive part of a gener part of a battle master. I'm excited about that. Rare mech. Po the gener might be the least rare mech. No, that's probably not true. The locust is the least rare mech. Ooh, plus two hit defense gyro. Just every attack that comes at this mech is 10% less likely to hit. That's fantastic. An okay medium laser. 
two pieces of a griffin 1s a plus melee hit gyro which is i mean whatever it costs zero tonnage we'll put it somewhere but plus injury resist cockpit that was actually a really really good payout for that uh, flashpoint i'm very pleased with that our financial problems are a thing of the past that's probably a pretty good place to stop for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I am very excited about where this crab is going to take our company. So come back next time, tomorrow, to see what I'm talking about. And we'll see you then.